Can scouting teach you how to be a great human being? That's what we're going to talk about today. Over every mountain, there's a path, although it may not be seen from the valley. Theodore Rothke. Today, we're going to be talking about How to Be a Scout, Do Your Best by Bear Grylls. Now, this book comes in a lot of different forms inside the book. There are parts of it that teach you great skills on how to be a scout, how to tie the proper knot, how to wear your bandana in the right way, how to make a tent work. We're not going to talk about those types of topics today. Instead, we're going to talk about some of the skills and values that scouting brings to everyone. Now, I didn't say this before, but I was the ultimate Girl Scout. Made it all the way, well, almost all the way to the top. And for various other reasons, had to drop out in high school. But scouting was a great experience for me. I talked about how I had this tumultuous family situation, how I had a lack of stability in my life. I didn't have a lot of people around me teaching me how to be a satisfactory human being, how to do things the proper way. But the one place I did was in my Girl Scout troop. My Girl Scout troop was amazingly filled with stable families, parents that were involved with their children, and they sort of adopted me in a lot of cases as someone who was part of their family, and I felt a part of their family very often. Some of the people that I was friends with throughout my entire time growing up was in my scouting troop. And so scouting was a great experience for me because it did help me stabilize. Bear Grylls, I like him, and he was a scout. He says that he was known once as an Eagle Scout or as a Queen Scout or a King Scout. I don't know what all those are, but he was many kinds of scouts, but it kind of shows with his ability to live out in the wild anywhere. Now, he said that many of us may have grown up being a scout, and we see it as a way of doing our best, of being prepared. I mean, that's the thing. If you remember anything from being a scout, it is be prepared. And you know what? I think that lesson carried through to me for my whole life. He says, quote, we don't call rain rain. We call it scouting sunshine. We know that every day is what we make of it. That's great. Maybe it should be called scouting clay. I don't know. But I like that idea that if you're prepared, every day is a sunny day. This, what is it? The Swedish quote that says there's no bad weather, only bad clothes. You can prepare for almost anything, and that's what scouting really teaches you. He says that it lets you get outside when it's sunny, when it's raining, and you start learning everything. His experience is he's learned all about the trees, the stars. Hey, it sounds like my Buzz Blossom and Squeak podcast. It's what it's all about, learning about all the things around you. And as a Girl Scout, particularly up in the North Woods, we were encouraged to do all those nature things. Many of the badges we have, and I still have my sash filled with my badges in my closet, were the outdoor nature kinds of things. We knew how to start fires. I thought, doesn't anyone who's on the show Survivor ever become a scout? They would know exactly how to start a fire. We could make things. And best of all, we knew how to help people in case of first aid situations. And then to just sit there and sit around the campfire and tell scary stories. I remember once we stayed at this place in the North Woods and it was this lake. And it was funny because there were no campgrounds. You just plopped down where you wanted to plop down. Not many people knew about this hidden lake. And it had a sandbar that went pretty far out. And in the middle of the lake was this tiny island. And for whatever reason, we all imagined that Stephen King was living on that island and that if we got out there, he would tell us ghost stories. So instead, we didn't want to go out there because we were scared to death. But we told each other ghost stories so we could also scare ourselves. But it was one of those bonding experiences that just was unreplaceable. And it made us a team in so many different ways. And so he says that's the one thing he learned out of all of it was teamwork, leadership, resilience. He says problem solving and initiative. And that'll help you prepare yourself for anything that you encounter. He tells you in this book how to tie a proper bandana so that it can be your sweat mopping thing. It can help you in first aid situations. It's useful for everything. If you watch Survivor, you'll see how useful those things are. But the important lessons that we're going to talk about are things that he says are the people parts that scouting taught him. And one of them, he says, is that we're always supposed to be kind and brave and grateful and accepting and determined. Be yourself. Be a friend. Be prepared. There's all sorts of things that he has in here. I'm not going to read them all. 
But you can see where this is going is that the idea of being a successful scout, you know that you can trust your fellow scouts, that you're loyal to each other. You don't stab each other in the back. We are a team together, that we are friends and we were friends. I mean, not every one of us liked each other in the same different kinds of ways, but we learned how to respect each other's skills and talents. And that if we're courageous, we can accomplish almost anything. As soon as fear grips you, it's when you're done, right? So he says that those lessons of courage, of being determined as what's going to keep you alive and what's going to help you take on all the different life challenges with optimism. I like that because it's true. If you realize that you can overcome challenges, and one of the most important things to me is I went on some very rough survival camp thing when I was young, very young, and we found out the Boy Scouts were doing a bunch of things and we wanted to do it too. So we had this whole camp prepared and that tough camping experience, and I believe it was cold too, taught me that I can survive on my own, that I can do hard things, that I can be determined. I think you get this idea when you're a kid that, you know, I was that kid that stared outside of windows and was lost in the clouds and probably I'd get treated with some ADD drug right now. But instead, I learned that when it mattered, I could focus. When it was important, I could do things. And so that scouting experience was the most important thing, I think, in my growing up. Plus, it taught me how to read books and how to find books that would make me better, not just fiction books, but nonfiction books. And I started reading those nonfiction books because in scouting, we had to write various reports to get our badges. So that was important. And then he says that you have to make sure that you have, you know, he says your time and you account for your possessions. You always want to know whenever you're in a tough situation, I think I did a whole podcast about this, what are your assets, right? And that would be like if you're out surviving in the woods, well, I have a pocket knife, I have my bandana, I have some matches, you know, you want to count up your resources. But in life too, we want to know what our resources are. And so if we're careful with our time and possessions, and we know what we have, the value of what we have, we will know there are people on our side, but there's also resources we can go to to get help if we need help. And sometimes, you know what? We all need help. So that's the important thing. So he says, first thing you learn about scouting is to never give up. And he gives what he calls the can-do formula, which is positivity, resourcefulness, courage, determination, and faith. Those things can make you strong enough to get through any hurdle. I noticed that, you know, if you ever watch a Bear Grylls show, he does, if you haven't seen him on TV, these survival things. And he either goes out on a, by himself in some of the shows. Other times he takes like Hollywood stars and brings them out into the middle of nowhere. And no matter who you are, whether you're a star or you're just a regular person, it always gets to this place where they're like, I can't do it. I can't cross this thing. I can't do that thing. I can't climb that rock. And he said that when you have that positivity, it'll get you through almost anything. It gives you energy. And sometimes you're going to need energy to get you through whatever situation you find yourself in. If you're negative, it's never going to get you anywhere. That you have to be resourceful, which means you're going to have to know what you have around you, what you brought around you, and the right skills and people to help you through any situation that you have. The courage is about having heart. And I think that's what he really encourages in all of his shows, is whoever he's with on whatever adventure he's with, he is telling people, never say die. Once you do that, he says, you're dead. You're not going to make it. it. Once you've given up, and that's where determination or grit, we did a podcast on Sisu, which is the Finnish word for grit, because you need to have that grit, which goes hand in hand with that courage. And then he says to him, most important of all is to have faith in your abilities, the faith in other people, and something bigger than ourselves. I'm not going to get into that in this podcast, but having faith that everything is going to pan out means more than anything. And so if you feel those things, you can get through almost any situation. And he says sometimes you have to ask for help. He says sometimes you have to have the courage to fail, which means, you know what? You are going to fail. I can guarantee you that in this entire life, you will fail. But the idea is that you're going to keep trying. But in the end, he says, quote, dreams are what drives us. 
And that means that we're going to have to dream big because if we just make small dreams, little ideas, then we're never going to get anywhere either. So either we don't get anywhere because we have no goals and dreams or we don't get anywhere because we don't have any positivity, courage, determination. You know, I would rather not get places that at least I tried because at least if I tried to get someplace and maybe I failed, I learned something along the way. I learned something about myself or maybe I learned something about what it is my goal was and I'll fix it the next time and make sure it's a little bit better. And he always says, of course, yet you have to eat well and take care of your body. The last thing is, never give up. He says, quote, use it and depend on it. Never give up is a strength of its own. The other parts he talks about is being a team player and being a leader. When you have leaders, you know how you're going through leadership situations and it's not quite what you think it is. You know, I have that problem too. When I think of a leader, I think of X, Y, and Z. I even am supposed to be doing my um, annual performance review right now. And, you know, you always have to do that self-review that makes you just feel dreadful. But I had a section in mind that was talking about leadership. And I thought, you know, I'm really new at this job. I don't feel like I've been a leader. And so I talked to my boss about it and I said, I flat out want to tell you that I don't think I did a very good job of leadership this year. You know, I've helped, I've assisted, I've done this, I've done that. But leadership, have I done that? And she showed me ways that I had been a leader this year. (laughs) Then I felt kind of dumb, like, why is she telling me? Why can't I see this for myself? But there are many different ways to be a leader. And some of them are being Captain Picard in Star Trek. And some of them are being Riker in Star Trek. And some of them are being every member of that bridge crew. Not everyone can be the captain. You still can be a leader, even if you're not in charge. And then you want to make sure that you have clear objectives. You know what you want. You know how you're going to get there. You know what steps you have to take. And they're going to be small, right? And you have to have clear roles. So if you're part of a team, what's your job? You know, if I'm spending all my time doing somebody else's job, I'm never going to do my job. And so that's the part of being in a team is having that idea of what it is you're supposed to be doing. And it's also a part of leadership. That's where I think I was getting it wrong. My role was to have leadership in this way not in this other way. So leadership can look like that too. And you always want to make sure you have good communication, which means that you're saying statements that make it easy for people to work together and work with each other. If you're lashing out at people, if you're striking them down and that negativity comes out, you're bringing the whole team down. How can you talk in a more positive way, but also in a way that makes sense? Like let's say you are crisscrossing some Grand Canyon, and you need to work together, or you're not going to make it across and you're not going to make it back. I think sometimes when you go on these survival camps or scouting camps and stuff like that, suddenly it becomes much clearer. You know, I can't think of a time in my Girl Scout troop where we fought. Like I said, we weren't all each other's cup of tea, but they all knew that they could depend on me to do X. I could depend on other people to do Y. And once we figured out those roles, we learned how to communicate with each other. So, Once you learn about your team and what your roles are, you'll be able to communicate a lot better. And he said that you're going to have to make sure that you realize there's no limits to what you can achieve. He says, and this is a good one, don't let success go to your head and don't let failure go to your heart. Neither of them are going to get you anywhere. Success is great because you can learn how you did something positively and it can kind of bump you up a little. But if you let it get to your head, you're going to miss things. And then if you let your failures go to your heart, you're going to lose your spirit. You're not going to be able to do the things you need to do in order to get it done. They're great if you can learn lessons from them. You can learn how I can do something better the next time. And so keep that in mind. I thought that was great advice. And the most important thing is, is that he said, first, you come back alive. Of course, that's the most important thing. You come back as friends and then you come back successful in that order. That's a direct quote. When you get together in a team and you have that leadership there, boy, you're going to be stronger together. He had some tips in here for being a great leader, and I won't go through all of them. Like I said, I'm not going to read the whole book, but in reviewing this book, I think they're fantastic, where it talks about leading by example. Don't order people to do hard work unless you're willing to be a hard worker. Make sure that you warn people if they're heading in the wrong direction or in the right direction, and make sure that you listen and that you're willing to change your mind if 
maybe someone has a very good point. And then be approachable. If you're the kind of leader, and I've had these bosses before in the past, where you're so afraid of them, you, you're, you won't go to them when you need help. And then when you're in trouble and the project's about to fail, and they wonder, why is it that this project's failing? Why didn't you come to me? Why didn't you talk to me? And then you go, well, I was really super afraid of you. Be approachable, and then people will come to you, and you can help them get to all your mutual goals. And I like this one, too. He says, keep your eye on the horizon. You know, you always want to know whether you're on a hike, on a camping trip, or in work. You know where you are now, but you always want to keep an eye out about where you want to get to. Sometimes by looking, I know from hiking, where you want to get to, you can see better ways to go, a clearer path, a less hazardous path. Or maybe you'll see a hazard in the middle of the road and avoid a different path. But when you keep your eye on the horizon, that's what's going to make you better in every way. And the last piece of advice we'll talk about now is, he says, why kindness matters. He says that we should show kindness to each other, that we should show kindness to our team. We should show kindness to strangers. And he says that if we can find something that we're passionate about, that we can volunteer for, and that way then we can be reliable. We don't want to bring our pride. I'm helping this poor, pathetic person. Look at me. You don't want to bring that attitude. We're all human beings, shoulder to shoulder. There's some things you're good at. There's something they're good at. All have positives and minuses, and no one's above anyone else. So make sure that when you're helping people, you don't act like a jerk in the process. And then he says the last part is we're going to take care of the world around us. He calls it leaving no trace. We always talk about that in camping or in hiking. You don't leave garbage around. You don't stack rocks on top of other rocks because it's all natural, right? Did you know that you're disturbing salamanders and other critters when you move the rocks around? So in that sense, we're also going to be kind to the environment around us and just leave things the heck alone. All right. So my challenge to you is think about how you're a leader. What are some ways that you have shown up as a leader And even when you're not in a leadership position, what types of traits did you express to other people? Are there some ways you could have been better? Or are there some ways that are really fine examples of something? And just think, how can I express those kinds of traits better in the future? Next week, we're going to talk about more of this book and hope that it teaches us how we can become an adventurer. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate listening to the podcast you could do me a favor and leave a review. It turns out that you may have many listens and my listens are fine. I'm not complaining about how many downloads I get, but I don't have many reviews. And so then it makes me think, are you really out there? Are there actual human beings out there? So if you get a moment to do that, I'd appreciate it. And our path towards having courage and determination and grit starts with small steps. Small steps.